G'day legends, I hope you're all having a fantastic time. I just got back from a long weekend away in Melbourne, did a few ragdoll gigs, went to the Melbourne Guitar Show, ate a whole bunch of delicious food in Melbourne and kind of got to see a few gigs while I was there as well. It was a pretty awesome time and while I didn't quite film as much as I anticipated when I left, I will give you a little overview of the madness Right now, you can use the timestamps and the chapters to navigate around if you want to watch a little bit of the Ragdoll gig or you want to see a bit about the guitar show. I didn't film any of my workshops that I did there because I was kind of busy presenting the workshops, but hopefully there's some kind people out there who took a little bit of footage and I can gather that at a later point. So that's kind of what I got up to on the weekend. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but for now, you can just kind of sit back and enjoy, you know, all the uh, bad jokes and all the crusty guitar tones. We'll chat in a second. Footage, Leon. Look at that. All right, Sunday. Got my workshops at the guitar show today. Had a really good gig last night. 
good turnout, lots of people I haven't seen for a while. Uh, pretty fun set, really, really fun set. We even had a buddy of ours from Sister's Doll get up and do a kiss song with us for the encore, which was awesome. So, yeah, I'm going to try and, where is it? Get yeah, this little cliff bar in me. Had a Powerade, so I should be feeling fresh and hydrated and we'll head off to the guitar show and make some noise. I'm actually kind of looking forward to playing this PRS again because it was amazing last night for a guitar that I think I'd spent all of five minutes playing. It worked perfectly for what we're doing, so it's going to be hard to give that one back. Hi, this is Kevin. I'm Rod and Ragnall and um, this, this is the point. This is our nightmare. This is huh? our nightmare. Song. Can you sing a song for the dog? Tula tu, tula baba, tula mtwale. Beautiful dog. Look at that. It's a prize dog. It's a, it is a prize dog, though, yeah. actually. Look at that color. A natural, delicious color. Don't drink it all at once. <laughs> How much you want? Yeah, Buster Buster, that's it. Stop. Cheers, boys. Cheers. <laughs> 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 We're drinking out. I like it. I yeah. like it. It's um I like that a lot. It's melted ice cream. Just water, so nothing to see about. Filter, that's how I sound like Richard Patrick from Filter. You sip it. <laughs> so the gigs normally speak for themselves. I'm sure if you've watched one of my travel vlogs before, you kind of know that yeah, we don't take ourselves that seriously on the stage or off the stage, we're very serious about making the music. But aside from that, going away on tour or going on sort of like a mini tour like this is normally about trying to maximize the amount of fun that we can have. We're in a new city, we're away from home. You know, you kind of arrange everything so that you've mostly got free time aside from the shows. So whether it's drinking a pine lime flavored oak or whether it's having the time to go and check out a bunch of cool stuff in town or go to the guitar show that's on. That's normally how we like to get around when we go traveling and touring. I do have to say a massive thank you to a few people as well. To Shane Williams. Shane, we love you. Thank you so much for driving us around town and making our life so much easier. To Andrew at Independent Music and to Ed Lim at Boss. Thank you so much for actually getting me out there to do some workshops at the show. I really enjoyed them. I feel super satisfied with what I was able to get across in the small amount of time that we had there. And there were some great questions and insights at the workshops. I got to meet a bunch of people who I kind of only know by their email signature or over Zoom calls or as you know, a little kind of YouTube handle in real life as well. So it was great from that perspective. Uh, Matt and Alex at PRS Guitars Electric Factory here in Australia also loaned me that gorgeous custom 24 piezo that I got to play for the weekend. So they were absolutely legendary. And there's a bunch of other people as well. Basically the people who came out to the gig, that was awesome. Saturday night was a really, really fun show. Just kind of the right mix of a good energy. You know, it's the end of summer here in Australia. Uh, the sound was great in the room. 
the set list just kind of seemed to come together. I thought we played pretty well. We had our friends from Sisters Doll come down and Brennan got up and sang some Kiss with us. It was everything that a rock show should be on our end. So that was awesome. The guitar show was kind of my first experience of something on that scale here in Australia. I've been to the Dallas guitar show, which is probably a little bit bigger, but the Margaret River guitar show, which we've done here, Strings Attached, is considerably smaller. So this was like in this kind of sweet spot where there was more than enough gear to keep anyone satisfied. I got to meet uh, Jason from Head First Amps as well and hang out and have a chat. Charles Cilia from Cilia Guitars, a bunch of the Boss team, the Fractal team. You know, it was a good time there. What I really liked, and as you would have seen in there, is that when everyone's playing every rock song that they know in E, you get 45 minutes out of the hour for everybody to make as much noise as possible. And that is pure insanity and madness. I really, really feel for everyone who has to work a booth there and put up with that. But what I liked, the organizers implemented 15 minutes of silence every single hour in there. So you actually kind of got to reset and have a break and walking around and getting that little break in there really, really made a difference. Whether you can just kind of sit down and have a coffee in some silence and recharge or whether you actually want to have a conversation without having to shout over somebody. I really enjoyed that. I think the highlight of the guitar show for me was Simon Hosford, incredible guitar player. I'm pretty sure based in Melbourne, played all of Ingve's trilogy album from start to finish upstairs there, nailed it. I don't think Ingve can even play those songs that well anymore. It was like every single inflection, every bend. I've listened to that album so much and Simon absolutely did it justice. The band was fantastic as well. Like the singer was insane. The keyboard player had all the sounds sorted. His tone like Strat into a Sir SL68 was just from another plane. It was so impressive. It was so cool. I felt like the standard overall there was just so high. And as I understand it, normally the guitar show in Melbourne has been in August. It will be interesting to see if they kind of stick with this March date. Again, it's like the end of summer here in Australia. And uh, it was a good time on my end. I don't know what the feedback was like or if anybody watching this got to go to the show. Let me know in the comments section below. But it was a really, really satisfying weekend. And then we kind of got a message saying, hey, Striper are in town. Do you guys want to come down and catch the show? And I know a lot of people in here love Striper, the 80s thing, Michael Sweet. It was so good. Michael Sweet is a force of nature, sings every bit as good as they could in the 80s. His guitar tone was amazing. I think using the ISP Theta Pro, and I know Michael's normally been a Mark series dude for a long time, but that did not disappoint at all. The dual guitar stuff was incredible. The band was super tight. The harmonies were wicked. I was so impressed, so impressed. Whether the whole Christian rock shtick is for you or not, you got to give them respect as a band. And I actually caught them Tuesday night in Perth just after I'd got back as well. And they were equally as good. So if you get a chance to go and see Striper, do it. That was awesome. I also caught Panic, a Sydney-based thrash trio who were really, really impressive. Keep an eye out for them. Uh, their guitar player was phenomenal as well. So it's kind of one of those weekends where, you know, you kind of go away, you play a few shows, you indulge yourself. But I came back feeling super inspired, both from a playing perspective and kind of a gear perspective as well. So what more can I say? I hope you enjoyed the footage. I hope anyone who went to the Ragdoll gigs or got to the guitar show had a great time. And I hope you continue having a great time. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, links in the video description to support what I'm doing. All of the Ragdoll discography is linked in the video description as well. And if you're a patron, I will be putting up full songs of all those shows on there for you to watch. So if you want to see those, you can sign up to my Patreon as well. From the bottom of my heart to everybody who came out, thank you so much. And to all of you wonderful subscribers, you know, we just cracked 81,000 subscribers on the channel. That is amazing. And I can't wait to show you all what's coming up on the channel. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.